The Jordan Poole Draymond Green saga began, or at least we thought it began, during the offseason last year when this video from practice surfaced. In it, Green, who was listed at 6'6", 230, was talking smack to fellow Warriors teammate and Michigan Wolverine Jordan Poole. The two would bicker with Green, the veteran, getting in Poole's face, who showed he was not about to back down. That's when Green left his feet, Rafi Torres style, and landed a huge, huge shot rocking Jordan Poole back. Teammates would soon get between the players, but the beef was officially announced to the masses. Now we have more from a very, very unlikely source. Listen, what I, what I would say is this. That that whole situation in, in, in Golden State is toxic. And from all the things that I was hearing him say, not guaranteed, but they were saying his reasons Draymond punched him in his face. They said the first day he told Draymond Green, you know, Michigan and Michigan State have beef. Draymond State, Draymond Green's from Michigan State. He's from mm -hmm. Michigan. That being the legend himself, hip hop artist and entrepreneur, Cameron. He told Draymond, I'm more to Michigan State than you, than you went mm -hmm. there. And then they was running sprints or something. He told Draymond, don't worry about it. You'll be in Sacramento next year. Then he crazy. told Draymond. <laughs> That's crazy. Then he, yeah, then he told Draymond, why is your Twitter handle money green when you broke and you're not going to get a new contract? And that's the one that broke the camel's back when yeah. you end up punching him in the face. So a lot of stuff. So that, that was see, a cover up then. That, that's what they're saying. And Draymond mm -hmm. couldn't talk about it. Lo and behold. And if you haven't gotten up to speed, here is the latest. The Golden State Warriors making a massive move. Shipping Jordan Poole reportedly to the Washington Wizards in exchange for future Hall of Famer Chris Paul, who was just recently dealt to Washington from Phoenix in the Bradley Beal deal. Moses Moody, the Warriors' young guard, caught up with Jason Dumas and gave his reaction to the trade. Yeah, I was shocked. I was sitting in the car. Uh, my friend mom called and that, that's, the first, that's the first way I heard it, but yeah, it was crazy. More from Cameron. I think since the beginning of the season, they had to make a choice between Draymond and, Golden, and Jordan Poole after that snuff. Mm -hmm. And then they said, look, we're going to see at least if we get the championship, make yeah. it, and they see it didn't work. So then mm -hmm. they have to make a decision. I agree with this. To get more context, Bay Area reporter Tim Kawakami wrote in his write up for The Athletic What's clear to me after a few days of checking around is that this all began when the Warriors decided that Poole was an extraneous and inefficient member of the roster. This was the precipitating issue. The Warriors wanted out of the $123 million deal they gave Poole only eight months earlier because his play last season didn't meet that value, especially given their extreme luxury tax pressures. Per Yahoo Sports, San Antonio registered some interest in Poole, although the Spurs never made an offer. There were also significant offer, excuse me. There were also conversations between Golden State and Boston, sources said, about sending Poole to the Celtics before the Seas went forward and traded Marcus Smart in the three team deal that landed them Porzingis. There were also rumors of Jordan Poole potentially being traded to Toronto for the Raptors' OG Ananobi, though that trade fell through. Here is what I see. Mike Dunleavy has taken over this team, and he has shown we are still going for it with the Chris Paul trade, a reliable point guard when he is healthy, and a good defensive player when he is healthy can also help push Steph off the ball, even though, which I'll get into in a second, there were multiple players that played on this team that could bring the ball up and push Steph off the ball, that being Draymond Green. Okay, Now, do I think that they are going to bring Draymond back? Absolutely because Dunleavy has signaled that they are still in it to win it. On top of this, Dunleavy's goal was shedding the pool contract, and with Chris Paul, his next season is not fully guaranteed. So basically, you're getting him for a one-year deal. If they win, they could sign him and bring him back to a team-friendly deal. His next season's contract, I believe, is about $30 million if they were to guarantee it. Obviously, they're not going to do that. I don't think any team would realistically do that. But Mike Dunleavy is carrying the torch that Bob Myers put down as he went away. On top of this, and I know I'm going to sound biased because I went to Indiana, but I do think that they made the steal in the draft with IU big man Trace Jackson Davis. 